Are you a single guy out there that would like to know how to talk to a lady? I'm Link, and I know the answer. Hey, I'm Kara from Connecticut. And this is Chia Lincoln from North Carolina. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. This episode is brought to you by Catula's. The guys with the goods. Visit Catulas.com. You can go there to get things like the Cooper Cooler. This thing, you put a drink in there, a minute later, it is refrigerator cold. You can put bottles in there, you can put uh, cans in there. They got all kinds of stuff like this at Catulas. I'm gonna use this later because I like my beverages chilled before consuming them. You can also warm baby bottles it's in there. It's also kind of like some sort of monster. Put drinks in me, I make them cold. It's time for a first ever Good Mythical Morning installment of Link's Golden Advice for Single Guys. This is when I, Link, give you, single guys, golden advice to help you get unsingalized. It's pretty simple. And when Link talks about, you know, giving advice to the single guys, I like to use this voice because this voice has been very effective for me in the years past, you know, before I met my wife. Now that I got my wife, I just talk to her like this and, you know, she likes it a lot. Uh, so Link, I'm probably going, not really though. I'm going to uh, read a couple of comments that we got here. You know, I noticed a pattern here. Uh, we had Max Moorman. You're he, really going to do this all the time? No, you want me to stop? Yeah, now's a good point. Okay. No one will notice that you stopped. Uh, we had Max Moorman. He said, "Dear Link, I don't know if he's a he's not a Mormon. It's not spelled like that, but you know, we'll put it on the screen. But it's fine if he is, I guess. Yeah. Dear Link, how should you approach a girl? Apple of internal happy says, "How do you start a conversation with a girl?" Mm. And Mr. Strawberry Fields, four, because Mr. Strawberry Fields, one, two, and three were taken. How do I work up the gumption to speak to a girl whose name is still a mystery to me? So I noticed a pattern here as I looked at the questions. Yes. For you. I see the pattern. All-knowing man. Of singleization. <laughs> unsingleization. Of unsingleization. Desingleization. Guys want to know how to approach girls and talk to them. That's what they want. They need that. They want that. They, and you have it. And you have the sweater and the tie, which means you have the credentials. Here it goes. First of all, I, you know, I want to put your mind at ease. Like, you know, I once was no different than you. I was also single. Really? And I was afraid to talk to the ladies. You know, back in middle school, uh, even when I got a girlfriend and I was no longer technically single, I was still afraid to talk to my girlfriend because there was this obligation to speak to her and like carry on a like a boyfriend girlfriend type relationship i guess yeah. even, even in middle school which is ridiculous yeah. in and of itself it is just just wait middle schoolers don't even worry about it Jen. you don't need a girlfriend but i felt this pressure to call her on the phone now this was leslie and then amber my first two girlfriends in middle school which were incidentally also your two first girlfriends at different times small town i you know I would hear I would hear people talking in middle school. Oh, you know, I talked to my girlfriend last night on the phone. Oh, well, I guess I need to call her. And I would get so nervous calling her on the phone. I had to write down. I decided I was going to write down the things that I was going to say. You know why you did this, though? Yeah, because you get on there. And I, no, I gave you the system. No, because you didn't, I was did going you? out with, with uh, Amber, and I said the way that I have a conversation with Amber is by writing down on a, on a notebook, piece of notebook paper. An outline? The four or five things that I'm going to talk to. Or her about. And I thought that I, was my idea. Are you sure? I think yeah. it was my idea. I thought I gave you the idea. Well, it didn't work. Either, I, either way, I, I would go through them all in like the first 45 seconds and I'd be, I'd say, okay. okay, bye. Right, right, right. So you had trouble talking to females. Yeah, I mean, it's not... But this is about approaching a, a female for the first time, you know? That's what these guys are asking about. My advice is this. Explanation to follow. Remember Miss Perfect. I remember Miss Perfect. Okay, in college, North Carolina State University, you know, you, you find yourself seeing familiar faces all over the place, even if you never talk to them. There was this one girl that we both saw, our other roommate, Greg, he also saw this girl at different times. She was hard to miss. She was, she was very pretty. And she wore like these boots and these skirts and these tops. Boots and skirts and tops, that pretty much says it all. And it was all notable. You know, even from across campus. And we just got to talking about her. We never talked to her, but we started calling her Miss Perfect. And we kind of had a similar schedule. I remember we would go to the Brickyard at NC State to eat lunch. And she ate lunch at approximately the same time a couple of times during the week. And we would just sit there at this table. And all we would do was talk about talk, and talk look about at Miss Perfect. Who but never, often ate alone. And we would never talk to her. Talk about ever. her. Talk about her Just talk lot. about And they're two very different things. I want you to move from... 
looking at someone who you consider to be Miss Perfect to actually speaking to Miss Perfect. Here's what happened. And, and let me say real quick, you know, a lot of people say you guys are excluding all the females out there because you're just giving advice to single guys. But girls, this kind of applies to you because you need to know what guys are thinking. Right. Okay. Leave a comment. Let me know as you're processing this advice, what you're thinking. Leave a comment. Now, I, we did see her with one guy and the dude's name, I'll, 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 I'll keep it from you for a second. But there was a guy who we'd see her with her. Okay, this must be her boyfriend. And then Greg said, I have a weightlifting class with Miss Perfect's boyfriend. That's an N. That's an N. And he has a tattoo and it says cash. It had a dollar bill on there and it said cash. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. She's dating this guy? Yeah. You know, she could be talking to me at least is what we were all thinking, right? We didn't, But we didn't have tattoos. And then we find out the guy's name actually is Cash, which I don't know if that makes it worse or better. Mm. You be the judge of that. Yeah. So that's the first thing is this guy probably had the guts to talk to her. The lesson learned, you could be Cash. But then years later, th I'm talking just a year ago. I'm at home, okay, this is years after college, whatever. I get a text from, from me. Rhett, and it says, Miss Perfect is on television. Turn on Wipeout. So I go to Wipeout, and you didn't say Miss Perfect is on television, you said turn on Wipeout. So I go and I turn on Wipeout, and I see the hostess, who I'd seen many times, the girl who's down on the Wipeout field cracking jokes, and Jill, she, she's pretty. I was like, it clicked, Miss Perfect. And then I remembered all of those times I looked at her, but never decided to at least go talk to her. Miss Perfect is Jill Wagner, host of Wipeout. Hostess. Hostess of Wipeout. And I think you, you shouldn't say hostess. I think that's sexist. She's yeah. just a host. Okay, I'm just sorry. Just like anybody else. Uh, but she actually, she's not on the show anymore. She's been replaced because she's focusing on her acting career. It's not, she wasn't fired. She was on the winter special a few days. That was the last, her last appearance. Anyway, oh. Jill from Wipeout was Miss Perfect. We never talked to her. What listen, is your point? Listen, guys, my point is remember you're Miss Perfect. It, you know, you could be tuning into television years later and realize I could have talked to that girl. Not, you know, I could have dated that girl. She could have been my girlfriend. You know, it's much better to have a story that's, hey, that girl who hosts that show, she rejected me. Then, hey, that girl who hosts that show, I saw her on campus and talked about her a lot. How lame is that? So even the worst case scenario is better. So there's your gumption, people. Now the other question is, what do you say I'm, when you I'm go a, up to the I'm girl? a little confused, though, because now we're both happily married to women that we actually did talk to. I have no regrets. And there's, because no, and there's no regrets about that. I took the advice I just gave you with the woman who is now my wife, and I have zero regrets. You mean it's like a mnemonic device at this point. It's, a way, it's a way to remember what you should do. Miss Perfect is a, is a remembering tool. Now we'll give some, yes, I will give some practical advice of what to say when you go up to a girl. I would say compliment her on something that is not related to her physical appearance. Like, I like your boots. No, that's still too close. It's more like if she has a patch on her backpack, you know, and you're at school, whatever school that may be, you say, I like your patch. Did you make that? I usually say something like, you know, back in the day, I like your boots. You know, I would use that voice. And I think talking about, if they got That's boots That's not on, my advice. I really like your boots. Where'd you get your boots? That always worked for me. Compliment her on something not related to her physical appearance. That includes her boots or her fashion. It's something one step removed from that. So she knows that you're, maybe you're, you're talking to her because you're only physically attracted to her, but you're already interested in other things about her. But and all I know about her at this point is what she looks like and what she has on. So I say, if she has a patch on her book bag, that's what I'm saying. Hey, I like your boots. I think your boots don't are, listen to him. Are much better than the patch. I mean, she, if she has a patch, the patch. That's is my okay. point exactly. But, but who has a patch? Do people have patches? It's very trendy to put patches on your book packs in in schools these days. Okay, they compliment her patch. Yeah, and then if she says. Oh, why do you say that? Say, I was just making up something so I could talk to you. That's a good follow-up, because now you're being honest. Well, and I think the point is, is that, like I said, we, we're both married uh, to women, uh, happily married, have been Different for women. a long time. Yeah, this I have my own wife, and Link has his own wife. And both of the situations started in the same way. We saw our wives in a public place, and we just went up and started talking to them. I think I, mm -hmm. my wife wasn't wearing boots at the time, so I couldn't compliment on her boots, but... Uh, I, I did say something like, how you doing? You know, something like that, you know. 
I use that. I recommend using the voice. Can't believe that worked. Uh, there was the way I met my wife was uh, there was a, a social, and there were it was a roller skating social. It was hmm. a very cool thing for college kids to roller skate back in my day. <laughs> Not really, but it was so uncool it became cool. But everyone's lined up outside, so I just kind of you know I saw her. I noticed my wife. Not knowing that she would be my wife. Did and she have on boots or roller skates? Uh, neither. Like tennis shoes, probably. I can't really remember that. Did you compliment them? No. Nice. I said, I like your patch. And then she was like, I don't have a patch. Oh, you went there. No, I didn't. I said, do you know how to roller skate? Oh, that's good. She said, no. I said, let me teach you. Let me teach you. <laughs> that's good, Link. You taught her how to roller skate, and now she's your wife. It works. So what I, what I hear you saying is that... You go to roller skating rinks and, uh, you know, if they're in a commensurate age to you, then ask them if you can teach them the roller skating. You, you j just do it. You, if, if there's somebody that you would like to talk to, just go up and talk to them. If they have a patch on their back. No regrets, people. They're going to be on television one day and you'll at least want to have a good story to tell. If they have a patch on their backpack, you can compliment that. If they have on boots. I think telling a girl nice boots. All Women comment. Do you like it when guys say nice boots if you have on boots? I think you do. But just yeah, let them know in the comments. Whatever it is, initiate a conversation. This is I'm, you, I'm supposed to be giving the advice, and I gave it. Okay, I'm just trying to help you out here. You don't need to help me out. You don't need to help them out. We got it covered. Me and you people, we got it. Now go and be golden. Let's spin the wheel. Whatever comes up on the wheel is how we end Good Mythical Morning. You can add your suggestions on Facebook and Twitter. Thumb you know wrestle. What? Thumb wrestle. Pause. Let's not do this because tomorrow is the blackout day. And we need to tell these people. That's right. I totally forgot. We are not going to end the episode the same way. We're not going to thumb wrestle. We're going to save thumb wrestling for another day. Don't you wish you could see us thumb wrestle? That's the point, people. Because we are not going to have an episode of Good Mythical Morning tomorrow, Wednesday, January 20, January 18th. And here's why. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details too much about this, but you might have heard about SOPA, the Stop Online Piracy Act. Uh, which seems like such a great idea when you think about it on the surface and you hear about it. Even guys like us, we make a living uh, with intellectual property. We sell music that we, you know, songs that we write. We've got a movie that we sold. We've got a television show that's out there for you to, to buy and download. And we like it when you do those things honestly and buy those things instead of pirating them. However, SOPA and its counterpart, HIPAA, are horrible ideas for reasons that I'm not going to go into because a lot of people who are smarter than us and know a lot more about these issues than we do have talked about them extensively in a number of videos. We're going to link to, to one of those. But the point is we are going to join in with the boycott, which is a blackout tomorrow where hopefully you'll feel a little pain of not getting Good Mythical Morning. That would make us feel nice. But even more so, you'll become educated about SOPA. So... We're going to put up some information tomorrow in that video about what you can do to be a part of stopping SOPA, and we'll be back here on Thursday.